Hidden beneath the water's surface, a remarkable transformation unfolds. I discovered a cluster of pond snail eggs attached to the roots of a floating plant in my aquarium and decided to document their journey. The entire process of embryonic development, lasting only five days, has been captured through my microscope. What you're about to witness is nature's intricate blueprint in action the metamorphosis of simple cells into complex living creatures. Join me as we explore how these tiny pond snail embryos develop specialized organs, form recognizable structures, and prepare for life beyond their transparent worlds. At 24 hours, we're witnessing the earliest stage of our pond snail's life, the blastula. What appears as a simple cluster of cells is actually a meticulously orchestrated beginning. These rounded cells, called blastomeres, have undergone multiple rounds of division, but remain relatively uniform. Though they look alike, these cells are already receiving chemical signals that will determine their future roles. Inside the egg, the embryo is suspended in a special substance called paravitaline fluid. Watch closely as tiny hair-like structures called cilia propel the embryo into a gentle spin. This rotation ensures the even flow of essential nutrients and oxygen to all cells while helping maintain the delicate balance needed for proper organ formation. Without this continuous spinning, these embryos wouldn't develop correctly. The slight depression forming on one side marks the beginning of the blastopore, the future mouth region, that will take place over the next 12 hours. This seemingly simple ball of cells contains all the genetic instructions needed to build a complete snail. By 36 hours, subtle yet significant changes have occurred. We've now entered the gastrula stage, where cells begin a carefully choreographed migration. The depression we noticed earlier has deepened as cells move inward to form a primitive gut. Though visually similar to the earlier stage, this embryo is undergoing profound internal reorganization. The first clear signs of tissue layers are forming. These will eventually become distinct organ systems. What was once a simple ball of cells is now developing a defined front and back, setting the stage for the more dramatic changes we'll observe in the coming hours. At 48 hours, our embryo has transformed dramatically. We now enter the early veliger stage, where the first recognizable snail features begin to emerge. The developing foot, the muscular structure that will eventually power the snail's movement, is now taking shape at the bottom of the embryo. Above it, the shell gland has activated, secreting the initial transparent dome that will become the protective shell. Inside, Primitive organs are beginning to form as cells rapidly specialize into different tissues. The embryo is becoming more active now, with slow rotations driven by tiny beating cilia. What began as a uniform cluster of cells just a day ago is rapidly organizing into a recognizable mollusk. At 60 hours, remarkable changes become visible. The embryo is taking on a more distinct, snail-like appearance. Most notably, the heart has formed and begun to beat rhythmically, a mesmerizing sight through the transparent egg case. Gastropods, including snails, were the first animals to develop two-chamber hearts. The shell has grown to cover more of the body. The foot continues to develop, occasionally flexing as the embryo tests its new muscles. What was just a spinning ball of cells two days ago is now unmistakably a young snail preparing for independent life. At 72 hours, our snail embryo has reached the advanced veliger stage. The shell is now well-formed and covers much of the body, providing the protection the snail will need throughout its life. Dark, pigmented eyes have developed and are clearly visible, allowing the embryo to sense light even before hatching. Antennae are beginning to extend from the head region, preparing for their future role as sensory organs, and mouth parts are becoming more defined as the embryo prepares for feeding. But the developing embryo faces dangers even within its egg case. 
The transparent membrane provides significant protection, but it's not impenetrable. Microscopic predators patrol the waters, seeking an opportunity to invade. If they find a weakness in the egg case, these opportunistic hunters will consume both the nutrient-rich paravetaline fluid and the embryo itself. This constant threat is one reason why snails produce so many eggs. Survival is never guaranteed in the microscopic world. At 84 hours, our embryo has taken on the unmistakable profile of a snail. The shell has continued to develop its distinctive helmet-like shape, covering the dorsal side of the body like a protective cap. The foot has grown more muscular and defined. Most fascinating is the active feeding we can now observe. The embryo is using its radula to consume the nutrient-rich paravetaline fluid surrounding it. The eyes are now more prominent, and the antennae have elongated further as the embryo prepares for its imminent life outside the egg. What began as a simple cluster of cells is now a complex organism with coordinated systems working in harmony. At 96 hours, our snail has nearly outgrown its temporary home. Though the transparent egg wall still keeps predators at bay, it's becoming a constraint for our rapidly maturing juvenile snail. Activity has increased dramatically. The foot flexes powerfully, the heart beats with vigor, and the antennae have grown longer, actively sensing the environment. The embryo now looks and behaves like a miniature version of the adult it will soon become, with all essential organs functioning. The challenge of limited space triggers a crucial developmental response, preparing the snail both physically and behaviorally for hatching which is now just hours away. At 108 hours, as the snail nears the time of hatching, we have an opportunity to examine one of its most fascinating sensory organs, the statocyst. This small spherical structure formed earlier in development, but is now fully functional. Inside each statocyst are tiny calcium carbonate particles called statoliths that move in response to gravity. As the snail changes position, these particles shift, stimulating sensory cells that line the chamber walls. This elegant system gives the snail its sense of orientation, allowing it to distinguish up from down, a crucial ability for an animal that will soon navigate the three-dimensional aquatic world. Without this gravitational compass, the snail would struggle with basic movement and spatial awareness after hatching. At 120 hours, the moment we've been waiting for finally arrives. After five days of remarkable transformation, our juvenile snails are ready to break free from their egg cases. Using their radulas, those specialized rasping tongues we glimpsed earlier, the snails methodically weaken the egg membranes while their muscular feet push against the walls. Suddenly, the membranes rupture and our fully formed snails emerge into the wider world. Now we can observe the snail's remarkable features in action. Muscular feet contract in wave-like motions, allowing the snails to crawl across surfaces. While primary locomotion comes from these contractions, tiny cilia lining the feet facilitate gliding and reduce friction. Their two-chamber hearts pulse rhythmically, circulating fluid throughout their bodies. But most impressive are the radulas in action. These remarkable structures work like flexible conveyor belts of tiny teeth, scraping and collecting food particles with each pass. What began five days ago as a simple cluster of cells has completed an extraordinary journey of development. From the first heartbeats to the formation of sensory organs, from early movements within the egg to this first exploration of the outside world, we've witnessed one of nature's most fascinating transformations unfold through our microscope. These newly hatched pond snails now join countless generations before them, carrying forward the intricate blueprint of life that guides each embryo from single cell to complex organism. Thanks for joining us on today's look inside the microcosmos. We hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel so you won't miss our next adventure.